Give him a round of applause. He's going to tell us about graphene, what the hell it is, and why it's going to make our life better. Thanks, Chris. Uh, yes, so I'm going to tell you about graphene. Who would have thought that 20 years ago we would be getting excited about carbon? You know, that is really quite an extraordinary thing that's happened uh, in the last 20 years. There's been various forms of carbon that we've discovered, and graphene is the most recent. And graphene really is just a sheet of carbon, something that we take from a pencil. And in fact, the very first experiments that discovered graphene used sticky tip in order to rip off a single sheet of carbon. Can you imagine the patience that that took? That had to be a physicist. No one else in their normal mind would sit there and think that you could rip off a single sheet of carbon. What's important, though, is that what's happened since that discovery not very long ago is that chemists have become involved and we've come up with practical solutions that can take pieces of graphite and turn it into multiple pieces of carbon, single sheets of carbon, that we can get into devices. So this story is interesting because it, it has arisen because of a collision of advances in material science with rapid advances in manufacturing or fabrication, in particular 3D or additive fabrication, to result in an extraordinary rate of progress in this area in just a number of years, and I'll, I'll come back to that uh, right at the end. But there's chemistries involved in taking that lead pencil and getting these single sheets of graphene, and controlling those chemistries is critical to controlling the exceptional properties that we might discover. So imagine a sheet of carbon which is, is stronger than steel conducts electricity like metals, and we can tune its biological activity. Well, that's exactly what we can do with these sheets of carbon and combine it with the right chemistries. And if we combine it with chemistries that will also enable the fabrication of devices, then you can see that you can rapidly take a very fundamental discovery and turn it into devices that are useful in a short period of time. So here we're creating the opportunity for you to imagine stuff, to imagine things and creating things that we couldn't create five years ago. And I'll just show you some examples of those. The fact that we can match these chemistries to bring out the properties and to turn it into devices in a very effective manner, whether that's three-dimensional printing, where we build up structures layer by layer, or whether we spin fibers and knit those into structures, we can realize devices very quickly. So for example, we can take graphene dispersions, the right graphene dispersions, and we use conventional wet spinning technology to create long lengths of micron dimensional fibers. That's fibers with the dimensions of your, own, of your own hair. Amazing mechanical properties, extraordinary electrical properties, but it's a thing, it's a device, it's a structure, and we can turn it into a practically useful thing. Here's just one example. We can take those fibers and we can knit them into conventional textiles and they can store energy within that textile. So we've got wearable energy, wearable energy that can power our devices, uh, not just for our pleasure, but maybe for medical, uh, diagnostic applications. Uh, you know, when a material scientist looks at people wearing clothes, they think, what a waste of space. You know, I mean, can you do something useful with that material? They're just sitting, hanging on us, making us look good. We, we want to turn it into functional materials. And advances in, in things like graphene and advances in the, the coupled fabrication technologies enable us to think about that. We can also 3D print graphene scaffolds. This story involves printing with a biopolymer. So this is a polymer that's going to give it structure, give the graphene structure, so that when we implant it into a biological system, that's us, it can facilitate and help in things like muscle regeneration or nerve regeneration or, or bone or cartilage regeneration, depending on the biopolymer that we might couple with that, that graphene structure. The ability to electrically stimulate those processes can accelerate them even further. And you know, 3D printing even enables us to, to think about printing living cells within that structure, to print stem cells, your own stem cells, within that structure, so as it can facilitate your cartilage regeneration. There is a procedure at the moment where you take stem cells and inject them into the damaged area, and they can facilitate regeneration. You do that with a structure, with a 3D printed structure, and it makes that process even more effective. 
So we're creating things that, as I said, we could only just imagine just a short period of time ago. Because of this rapid advance in material science, but coupled with advances in additive fabrication. Look at this growth. You only have to look at one, one, one curve there. That's the graphene publications, which is going through the roof. And it's because graphene, I believe, it's because the graphene discovery came along at the right point in time. It came along when we understood about how to be clever about putting new materials into structures. It came along when we understood that we could, we could make things that make things. We use 3D printing to make 3D printers. We use 3D printing to create fabrication tools that enable us to put our graphene structures together. So, you know, if you turn up at the right time in a party, you're going to have a pretty good time, and, and graphene has turned up at the right time, believe me. <laughs> it's going to explode into many other areas that you've heard about tonight, using graphene for energy storage, uh, using it for composites, whether that's engineering composites or the biocomposites that I've mentioned to you that will be used for implants uh, to facilitate regeneration uh, of, damaged, of damaged organs, of damaged tissue. There will be many applications for graphene, all because it turned up to the party at the right time. So is there a role for Australia in these exciting developments? Well, Australia is not a major graphite supplier, and that's where the graphene comes from. Remember that lead in the pencil? So we're not just going to dig it out of the ground and make a fortune from it, and thank God for that. So we actually have to do something clever with graphene or graphite if we're going to be a competitor. And Australia is well placed to do it, because imagine those two examples I gave you, the wearable energy, the implantable bionics. It uses graphite to graphene and fabrication tools, but it requires the input of a diverse array of minds. And if there's one thing we're still good at in Australia, it's pulling together multidisciplinary research teams and pulling them together quickly in order to realize those opportunities. So I think that's where the opportunity is for us. There may be other opportunities, particularly in research training. We've just recently launched a, a global degree in biofabrication that uses materials like graphene with a couple of European partners and Australian partners. And I think there are niches in this area, graphene and in 3D printing, where there's real opportunities for Australia. But as you've seen, the door opened really quickly. That door can shut just as quickly but I think we're an opportunity, we have an opportunity to do something exciting in that area. And I look forward to working uh, with all of the people I work with in doing it uh, and working with groups like yourselves and make sure we do it in clever ways. Thank you.